Now I will discuss more in detail data from a typical breath by breath experiment. I will discuss the various pages. There are four pages that include the breath data. As an aside, you will notice that after 15 to 20 minutes of data collection, the update or refresh time in the table and the graph becomes fairly slow, 10 to 15 seconds. You must realize we're dealing with a very large amount of data in this time. We're talking about a couple hundred thousand data points plus 40 or 50 calculations at each of those data points. So the software is working quite hard. You can speed up the update somewhat by uh, using a 30 second strip chart on page one rather than a manual chart which will give you the complete data set. Also if you're not using the spirometry page, page four, delete that. That may help speed up the update time. So now I'll retrieve an exercise experiment and discuss the data in more detail. This is a exercise experiment on a stationary bike or an ergometer in which the subject rested for one minute then had a protocol whereby the work rate was increased each minute until he stopped pedaling and then recovered. You're familiar with this page. You have the plot showing the oxygen flow and carbon dioxide profiles as well as all the raw data and the meters. So I'll now go to the f some of the following pages where the breath data calculated from each individual breath is plotted. On page two we have four different graphs showing various breath parameters that were calculated. In the first graph we show ventilation which is just the uh, volume of air breathed per minute, the VCO2 which is the carbon dioxide production and the VO2 which is the carbon dioxide consumption. By the way if you're unfamiliar with some of these terms of respirometry please read the manual introduction. These parameters are explained there. You'll notice that the ventilation increased as the work rate increased and then recovered. This type of plot is quite useful for athletes. For example, the recovery time is a pretty good indicator of fitness. The blue dots here show the oxygen consumption. The purple dots show the carbon dioxide production. Where they cross is a fairly good indication of the anaerobic threshold. Just point out that each point on these graphs on the following pages are breath parameters. In other words, calculated and printed out at the end of each exhale. So there are far fewer points on these graphs than on the raw data graphs on page one. The second graph indicates ventilatory equivalents, which are just the ventilation divided by VCO2 or VO2, and as well a parameter called RER, the respiratory exchange ratio, which is just the VCO2 divided by VO2. Here also we can see an indication of anaerobic threshold when the ventilatory equivalents cross or when the RER goes above one. You'll notice that even after the exercise stopped RER continued to increase due to the increase in oxygen 
The reason for this is just the oxygen debt that you incurred while working very hard. RER is also useful in studying metabolism. RER is connected to the respiratory coefficient, RQ, which is what's happening at the muscle level. When you are burning fats, RER should be in the range of 0.7, whereas when you're burning carbohydrates, it'll be closer to 1. Consequently, RER can be used in diabetic studies. The third graph indicates the end tidal values of oxygen and carbon dioxide. These are just the values at the end of exhale. The fourth graph indicates heart rates, the red being just the straight heartbeat, and the orange being the oxygen pulse which is the oxygen burnt per heartbeat. On the next page, we have more breath graphs. The first one being energy expenditure in kilocals per day. The second showing the tidal volume, which is the volume of each exhale, and also the dead volume in small gray squares. This is the volume of the airways and mask. This volume must be cleared before oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide from deep within the alveoli of the lung begins to appear. The other two bottom graphs, VE versus VCO2 and VCO2 versus VO2, are just different graphs that allow you to see anaerobic threshold. There should be a kink in the slope of the graph and from the two slopes and the kink you can obtain the anaerobic threshold. The fourth page I'll show you with a different experiment. This is a forced inhale maneuver, inhale exhale maneuver, and is useful for studying lung volumes. So I'll go to page 4. The spirometry page. Of course spirometry does not require the CO2 and O2 signals, only the breath flow signal. Here we have a, a lung volume versus time plot showing normal tidal breathing followed by a very large inhale and a complete exhale right to completion. A more useful plot is the flow, breath flow versus volume, lung volume. This being the inhale and this being the exhale. Now again if you're not familiar with the spirometry uh, terminology there's a section in the beginning of the user's manual discussing these various parameters. This graph is very useful at measuring the various lung volumes and detecting various lung diseases. So you can see the various pages, the three pages showing breath parameters provide very useful information for both the athlete, the cardiologist, and others are more interested in lung dynamics.